Mining is one of the oldest jobs in the world, with the history of mining going back to the ancient world. It is a dangerous job with the constant risk of explosions, toxic air, extreme temperatures or cave-ins. When a miner hears a knock in the mine, it's often taken as a warning of a cave-in. Many miners believe that these knocks come from beings called the Tommy Knockers. This belief of the knocker began in Cornwall, England, where the miners believed that these creatures would beckon them to finding rich veins of tin by knocking. But they would also knock on the walls to warn the miners of a cave in. When the Welsh and Cornish miners emigrated to the United States during the 19th century, they brought with them tales of beings that would become known as the Tommy knockers. Tommyknocker is a creature that is derived from the belief of a being called the Knocker. These are said to be creatures around two feet tall, with a large head, long arms, wrinkled skin, and white whiskers. They look similar to a gnome, and they're often perceived as being green in color. They're said to wear a tiny version of miner's garb, and they're known to commit random mischief like stealing unattended tools or food. And sometimes the miners will even hear laughter and footsteps in the mine. Or, in some occasions, the knockers will be seen working alongside the miners. The name comes from the fact that the knockers will warn miners of an impending danger by knocking on the walls. It's also believed that the knockers are the spirits of Jewish miners they were sent to tin mines of the islands to work as slaves as punishment, or that the knockers are spirits of other miners who died in the mine. It's believed that these spirits do not wish the same fate on anyone else, and that's why they give warnings by knocking on the walls to let everyone know that there is an impending cave-in. Regardless of if it's a spirit or a small gnome-like creature, miners would show their appreciation for this gesture by carrying extra food with them and leave that as an offering for the Tommy Knockers. Most miners do believe that the Tommy Knockers have good intentions, even if they can be mischievous and play a lot of pranks on the miners. But there are some who believe that the Tommy Knockers are more malevolent creatures, and will do things such as calling out people's names to lure them deeper into the shaft and their eventual demise. Another belief is that the knocks that can be heard in a mine isn't the tommy knockers warning miners of a cave-in, but rather it's the sound of them shipping away at the support beam in order to cause a cave-in. There have been a few stories of mines haunted by Tommyknockers. One such mine is known as the Mamie R Mine, which is supposedly located near Cripple Creek in Colorado. Now, I should point out that the existence of this mine has been called into question due to the lack of information on the mine itself. It exists mainly in the stories. Even so, according to the legend, this mine is one of the most haunted mines in the West, with both ghosts and Tommyknockers residing within the mine. Tommyknockers are sometimes seen as malicious, and they will terrify the miners so much that they will refuse to go back into the mine, which will then lead to the mine being closed. And according to the legend, this is exactly what happened to the Mamie R mine. But even though a lot of the miners refused to go into the mine, the mine was not shut down right away. While many of the more superstitious miners refused to go back into the mine, there were other miners who were far less superstitious and they had no problems entering the mine in the hopes of becoming rich. But strange accidents began happening in the mine. 
The first real accident happened to a miner by the name of Hank Bull. One day, he heard what he would describe to the other miners as the voice of a young boy that was down a newly dug tunnel. As this tunnel was new, it hadn't been secured with boards to hold the ceiling in place yet, so it was a dangerous place to be, especially for a small child. So, despite the warnings of the other miners, Hank would head down the tunnel in search of the child. After a few minutes, the other miners would hear Hank scream. They would rush to the tunnel entrance and as soon as they got close, they saw the ceiling collapse on top of Hank, which killed him instantly. The story of this accident would spread quickly, causing many miners to leave and find work in mines that were considered less dangerous. But there was still a small crew working in the Mami R mine. This crew would claim that they heard voices and whispers from empty areas of the mine. They also claimed that they would sometimes see a shape that moved past them, but that disappeared the second they tried looking for it. Another thing that this crew would report is that someone was messing with the windlass. A windlass is an apparatus that is used for moving heavy weights. With a rope, this windlass would lift a bucket that was filled with ore or rocks. In my video on the petrified miner, I mentioned that this bucket would sometimes also be used as a kind of elevator for miners to use to get up and down the shaft quickly. Attached to this windlass was a bell. And this bell would ring three times to alert the workers above that the bucket was full and should be hauled up. According to the legend, there were several incidents in the Mami R mine where the bell would ring, but when the bucket was pulled up, it was completely empty. The windlass would be connected to another death in the mine. Sometime in November 1894, this bucket would fall and hit one of the workers that was standing below, which crushed his skull and killed him instantly. This was not an uncommon accident, as sometimes the ropes that were attached to the bucket would give way. But this time, there was no logical reason for the accident. The knot on the rope was still intact and tied tightly, and the rope itself was also intact. After this second death, the other miners would report seeing the ghosts of these two men in the deepest parts of the mine. Then, on Christmas Day 1894, the mine had flooded, which left the workers spending Christmas Day hauling out buckets of water. Three men were turning the windlass up when suddenly it broke, or to be more accurate, it basically exploded, with pieces flying everywhere, and the bucket fell back down into the mine. And when the bucket fell, one of the workers would become tangled in the rope. The rope would somehow find its way around his neck, and as the bucket fell, the rope would tighten so quickly around his neck that he was decapitated. For the miners and pretty much everyone else, this was the final straw, and the mine closed for good in January 1895. That is just one well-known example of a mine that is said to be haunted by Tommyknockers. There are, of course, other mines, like the Crescent Mine in Sumter, Oregon. This mine is said to be a hotspot for Tommyknockers. Another mine is a mine that is located in the hills of Smokeshire. Legend has it that around 200 years ago, seven miners were working in the gold mine when they suddenly heard tapping sounds from somewhere deep within the mine. Four of these seven miners would leave the area immediately while the remaining three would start laughing and joking around about the superstition of the others. And supposedly, they even started challenging the Tommyknockers, daring them to do something. Turns out that these knocks were indeed a warning of a cave-in, and these three men would lose their lives in the cave-in, and they were never found. The four men who had left the area immediately as soon as they heard the knocks, claimed that they had seen the Tommyknockers while they were running out of the mine. 
There's still said to be gold in this mine, but after this accident, no one wanted to go back into the mine, and as a result, it will be sealed up. The legend of the Tommy Knockers have been around for centuries. Could the knocking in mines simply be the creaking of earth moving around, or is it a warning from the entities within the mine? One thing is for certain, if you are inside a mine and you suddenly hear a knocking sound from somewhere, you better run out as fast as you can. 